In April 1945, in the final days of World War II, intense fighting in Berlin revealed the devastating scale of the conflict, with more than 50 million dead. As the Allies discovered the concentration camps, the world was forced to confront the atrocities of the Holocaust. This horror led the Americans to make the Germans observe the consequences of their actions, although many denied knowledge of the genocide. Adolf Hitler's rise to prominence began after World War I, when he returned to a defeated Germany and joined the army. Quickly identified for his ability to propagate and gather intelligence, he was used to infiltrate the DAP, marking the beginning of his political influence which would culminate in the tragic impact of his ideology laid out in Mein Kampf. Adolf Hitler, discovered for his oratorical skills in the Munich Beer Halls, rose to become the leader of the NSDAP and began to attract thousands of followers in the early 1920s. Inspired by Mussolini's coup, he attempted a similar coup in Munich in 1923, known as the Munich Putsch. The attempt failed, resulting in his arrest and the death of 16 followers. During his imprisonment in Landsberg Fortress, he faced a deep personal crisis, but also reconsidered his political strategy, marking a crucial turning point in his path to power. After the failed Munich Putsch in 1923, Adolf Hitler was in prison, which could have marked the end of his political career. However, during his time in prison, he found an opportunity to redefine and strengthen his influence. He drafted a defense document and reflected on his political enemies, using his trial as a platform to demonstrate his charisma. Despite the severity of the charges, he was acquitted and served only nine months of a five-year sentence, during which he received special treatment and was able to maintain key political connections. This period in prison was fundamental for Hitler, allowing him to solidify alliances and plan his political future. His ability to use this adversity to his advantage eventually allowed him to reorganize and lead the Nazi movement to power in Germany. During his time in prison following the failed Munich Putsch, Adolf Hitler received a typewriter from a frequent visitor, which allowed him to personally write, Mein Kampf. Despite rumors that others had written the book for him, it is widely accepted today that Hitler was the main author. In prison, he immersed himself in readings on pseudoscientific racial theories, which he incorporated into his book. This text established the ideological foundations of Nazi anti-Semitism, describing Jews as a parasitic threat and presenting Aryans as a superior race. Mein Kampf became an essential component of Nazi propaganda, reflecting and promoting the persecution of Jews and other minorities. After being released from prison in 1924, Adolf Hitler took advantage of his growing notoriety to publish Mein Kampf, an anti-Semitic manifesto that blamed the Jews for Germany's misfortunes, including the defeat in World War I. Although the book was heavily promoted, it did not become an immediate sales success and received mixed reviews for its confusing style and for not meeting expectations of sensational revelations about his failed coup. Despite this, Hitler continued writing and developing his ideology, even publishing another lesser-known work, The Secret Book, while consolidating his position as a central figure in German politics. Initially, Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf did not achieve sales success, and a second work was rejected by his publisher. However, the Great Depression in 1930 drastically transformed his political fortunes, increasing support for the Nazi party, which rose from 3% to 18% in the elections. As the party grew, so did the sales of Mein Kampf, reaching 54,000 copies sold in 1930. This resurgence changed Hitler's public image, elevating him from an agitator to a respected thinker and writer. In 1933, Hitler became Chancellor of Germany and used his book as a propaganda tool, recommending it to officials and gifting it to newlyweds to spread his ideology and consolidate his power. Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler's manifesto, became a symbol of Nazi power thanks to its integration with industry, especially with companies like Krupp, which distributed the book as a prize to employees. The work was published in various formats, including luxury editions and a version in Braille, promoting it as the Bible of Nazism. Although more than 12 million copies were printed and generated significant income for Hitler, it is unclear how much of the content was actually read by Germans. Many copies remained unread on shelves, underestimated by many as mere rhetoric, although in some households it was recognized as a harbinger of the horrors to come. This disparity in the reception of the book illustrates the complex relationship between Nazi propaganda and German public perception. In 1938, 
a young man named Lux listened to his father, Otto, an architect, intensely discuss Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler's influential book. During a meeting at his home, Otto urged his friends to read the book to understand the true plans of the Nazi regime. Although it is uncertain whether his friends heeded the advice, it is clear that Otto perceived the warning signs in Hitler's ambitions, in contrast to the public message of peace propagated by the Fuhrer. Hitler feared that his book revealed too much about his expansion plans, especially against France, whom he described as Germany's mortal enemy. In Mein Kampf, Hitler justified the need to secure territory for the German people, harshly criticizing France and suggesting a military revenge. If the French took these threats seriously, they could hinder his rearmament efforts. In a strategic move in 1933, Hitler manipulated international perception by granting an interview to the French journalist Fernandez Brennan, where, in response to questions about his anti-French statements, he denied his belligerent intentions and claimed to seek only peace. This stance was radically at odds with the aggressive plans outlined in his book, demonstrating the duplicity with which Hitler managed his public image and his true intentions. In an interview with the French newspaper, Le Maiden, in the 1930s, Adolf Hitler attempted to soften his image, contradicting the belligerent stance of his book, Mein Kampf. He claimed to have changed since his days in prison, presenting a false pacifist posture that contrasted with the aggressive policies outlined in his book. Meanwhile, in Germany, the anti-Semitic ideas of Mein Kampf were widely disseminated through radio and print media, exacerbating hatred towards Jews and shaping public opinion to accept anti-Semitism as normal. The regime used propaganda to instill these messages, with caricatures and falsehoods depicting Jews as mortal enemies. Despite his peaceful declarations in international interviews, the annexation of the Sudetenland in 1938 revealed Hitler's true expansionist intentions, invalidating any claims of peace and showing that his imperialist agenda was still active. In 1938, the Munich Agreement marked a crucial attempt to preserve peace in Europe, where Neville Chamberlain and Eduardo negotiated with Hitler, ceding Czechoslovakia in exchange for promises of peace. Upon their return, they were received as heroes, but the peace was illusory. The rhetoric of peace permeated Europe, ignoring the explicit warnings in Mein Kampf. Soon, the reality of Hitler's intentions was revealed when Germany invaded Poland in 1939, triggering a military expansion that included the occupation of much of Europe. This turn of events forced a re-evaluation of Mein Kampf as a true manifesto of Hitler's destructive ambitions, and the Allies began to use the book for counter-propaganda, demonstrating its imminent danger. During World War II, the United States used propaganda, including short films citing Mein Kampf to mobilize public opinion against Nazism, highlighting its racist and extremist ideologies. Post-war, Mein Kampf became an uncomfortable symbol of Nazism in Germany, leading many to dispose of the book to avoid associations with the defeated regime. Despite the ban on its reprinting in Germany, the book continues to be published globally, reflecting the challenges of containing its distribution in the information age. Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf has sold millions of copies since 1945, maintaining global interest partly due to its prohibited nature. While it remains popular in areas with strong anti-Semitic and ultranationalist sentiments, such as some Arab countries, Turkey, and India, its access in Germany is restricted to critical editions that include detailed commentary from historians to refute and debunk its content. Since 2016, the book has been in the public domain, theoretically allowing new editions, but in Germany and other places, versions that seek to educate and correct Hitler's ideas are prioritized. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. Remember, a people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.